welcome to the second North Carolina Medical Society Spotlight. I'm your host, Sue Ann Forrest. If you're interested in being considered for our next spotlight, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. This week, we're following physician assistant Dan McCurney to learn a little bit more about his Leadership College project, his practice in Raleigh, North Carolina, and why he's passionate about combating the opioid epidemic. Today, we're here with Dan McCurney at Advanced Healthcare. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank today. you for having me today. Um, so, let's get started by talking a little bit about your Leadership College project. Sure. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I went and took a look at the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System, knowing that providers aren't using it enough in our state, which is right. probably why we had to come out with the STOP Act. Um, so I sent out a survey to over 400 members of the Medical Society and got their responses, um, compiled them, and made a list of recommendations of changes that need to happen to the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System. All right. And did you see this as a problem within your patient population early on? Was that? Yes, absolutely. So one of the, the stories I shared during my, my project presentation was that I encountered a patient um, in past practice that had come to me to establish care for prescriptions of a medication for ADHD that just so happened to be controlled. So as I usually do, I checked the North Carolina Controlled Substance Reporting System and found that this patient had been filling the exact same prescription three times a month from three different providers for about two years. Uh, and when I confronted them about this, uh, problem here, this discrepancy, I found out that this patient told me that they thought they were doing the right thing in the beginning because they were getting a, a prescription from a doctor, um, but then it just kind of escalated from there and they were about to get a divorce and they lost their job over, over their addiction to this medication. So I knew some of the providers that were had been involved in this patient's care and I, I knew that they were not um, they did not have malicious intent. They, they were very good providers. I respect them. Um, but certainly there must be something going on with the system if we can't go and, and look at that very easily. Right. And what were some of your, you laid out a number of suggestions on how to improve the CSRS. What were some of those suggestions that you think could improve the process? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things I looked at was just how difficult the system is to log into. So there's at least 12 different clicks that have to take place just to go from logging in to finally searching and getting the results that you're looking for. So finding ways to reduce that would, would be key. Another one was incorporating the, the North Carolina Control Substance Reporting System into the, some of the top EMRs that we use as providers in the state, so something like Epic or Athena or eClinical Works. Um, that way providers can use one system and save time instead of having to go between two different programs in order to find the information they need. And, and what are some ways that you would encourage your peers and other providers to cut back the use of opioids in order to um, combat the opioid epidemic? Yes, so I think a lot of it comes down to patient education and setting reasonable expectations for pain control. Um, I think we have kind of evolved into this culture of we have to alleviate all pain. Um, and is that really necessary? I think that's, that's still up for pretty good debate, um, but educating the patients as to why we are prescribing limited quantities, why we're following up with them a lot um, more closely than we used to uh, is, is important for them to understand that this is, these are addictive substances and they're, they're not to be taken lightly. Right.